Mongolia is the first window I opened on my journey. My eyes are full of exotic scenery and surprising discoveries. This afternoon, I'll finish the last few dozen kilometers in Mongolia. My motorcycle has taken me right across the Gobi grassland safely, and now it's covered in dust. I'm washing it thoroughly and will ride on to Russia completely refreshed. <laughs> Bold, the inn owner who helped me find another me in Mongolia, has driven 300 kilometers to the border to make arrangements in advance for me. The London Olympic Games are going on, and my own Olympic event is also vivid and dramatic. Before crossing the border, I replaced the Mongolian flag on my motorcycle with a Russian one. It's trivial, but it's my way to show respect to the countries I pass through. After doing all this for me, Bold bids me farewell in Chinese. Russia is my second border crossing. Like at China's border post, the frontier guards check my luggage first to see if I have any forbidden items, and then I go through the border crossing procedure. When I was crossing the Chinese-Mongolian border, I hired an agency to help me out, but this time I can do it on my own. As long as you have all the required documents, crossing the border is not that complicated at all. Half an hour later, I finish the border check, and a brand new world unfolds before my eyes. Good впечатление. Upon entering Russia, a 7,000-kilometer journey full of unknown adventures awaits me. I'm as excited as a rock band ready to perform. With a population of 20,000, Kyakta 300 years ago was an important destination on the Silk Road. Riding a motorcycle in Russia requires local insurance, so as I enter the city, I head to an insurance broker. My Yangtze 750 motorcycle is a version of the former Soviet Union's Ural motorcycle. As a result, when the Russians see my motorcycle, they look on in admiration. <laughs> to better imitate me, they even put on my gloves and take pictures wearing them. Traveling sometimes means adventure. I randomly stop at a garage. I would never have thought that I'd share a special bond with the mechanic there. We meet at 2.30 p.m. on July 30th, 2012. If I had been a few minutes earlier or later, we might have missed each other. A person's life is like a film. 
We all experience different stories at different moments while the film is running. Over the past 22 years, I've met hundreds or even thousands of people. From the moment I was born, my bond with people started to develop. The probability of two people meeting is 1 in 5,000. The probability of two people knowing about each other is 1 in 0 0.2 billion. While the probability of finding a person born on the same day as me is like searching for a needle in a haystack. On the afternoon of July 29, 2012, I'm the last person to cross the border. If I had been a few minutes late, I would have had to enter Russia the next day, and maybe I'd have missed the chance to meet the focus of this episode, Gaynor. On the morning of July 30, 2012, this Russian boy started speaking to me out of curiosity, thus prolonging my refueling time. If that hadn't happened, my life would have never crossed Gaynor's path. I had planned to take my time to turn onto a small road, but I had to accelerate because a dog was chasing me. This is how I came across Gaynor. When various magical elements converge at the right time in the right place, fate brings people together. On the first day, and in the first town after entering Russia, the first young man I spoke to was only seven days older than me. What a coincidence. My search for people of the same age as me in Russia begins with this young mechanic. Gaynor is a straight shooter. Among all those who take photos with my motorcycle, he's the only one who asks me if he can ride it. Good impression. The photos of travelers from around the world in his phone prove his love for vehicles and his longing to travel. When he's waiting for the glue to set, Gaynor makes time to fix some soldiers' tires. This allows me to watch him in action. Right. 
，纯正的普通人。Gaynor is quite a skillful mechanic. He removes the tire quickly, as if he's playing a musical instrument. Beauty is not only seen on stage, it can be seen through work as well. Gaynor is carefully cleaning the dirt inside the hub. It's actually beyond his responsibilities. He does this out of his love for vehicles. The garage he works in is located right by the road, leading to the border. So he's able to make friends with a variety of people. Beside the garage is a cross-country recreational vehicle converted from an old truck. It is owned by a young French couple who are on a journey around the world. Gaynor is fixing the gearbox for them. The couple have been stuck here for more than 40 days. They are very grateful to Gaynor and the help he has provided. They invite Gaynor and his boss to sign their names on the RV. Gaynor and his boss, Euler, write, We are together to encourage the couple. <laughs> Gaynor treats my motorcycle with great care, as if it's his own. <laughs> The old man making a toast to me is Euler's father. <laughs> we drink vodka. This drink has a history of over 500 years in Russia. Russians eat bread when drinking vodka. According to statistics, every person in Russia young and old, consumes 15 liters of liquor every year. Among the mechanics, there's a man without a chin. His name is Alesha. In the Second Chechen War between the Russian Federation and Chechen separatists back in 1999, a bullet pierced his chin and back. After being injured, Alesha was in the hospital for six months. From him, I can see how war has affected ordinary Russians. <laughs> The motorcycle maintenance lasts till twilight. They've almost fixed all my bike's problems. In the end, Gaynor and Alesha tweak the carburetor and hand over the repaired motorcycle to me.
I want to pay them, but they refuse. Having drunk almost half a liter of liquor, Euler's father is still able to push the truck. The garage's door may be shut, but my story about Gaynor has just begun. The next morning, Euler drives the bulldozer he bought not long ago to work. He's still excited about it, so he drives it to and from work every day. I thought Euler's father must be sleeping because he drank too much last night. But he shows up early in the garage. Even an old man in Russia can hold his liquor. So imagine how much a young guy like Gano can drink. This punching bag is the first piece of furniture in Gaynor's unfinished house. He owns this yard with his boss, Euler. Russia is rich in forests, so Gaynor's house is mainly built of wood. Gaynor also has his own car, but he has sold the wheels. This young boy is the son of Gaynor. They always hang out together. The naughty boy tears out a wire in his beloved car, which Gaynor tolerates. I can imagine that in the future, he'll become a patient and kind father. Gaynor surprises me once again. Although he's just a mechanic living at the bottom of society, he's quite familiar with his city's history.
那个蓝色的房子是什么？Мне, мне он очень нравится. Я его не покину никогда, наверное, этот город свой. Kyakta doesn't have tall buildings. It's a place where rural things and modern vehicles coexist. You can say it's primitive, and you can also say it's simple. But Gaynor loves everything here from the bottom of his heart. He loves his hometown, the multinational culture, and the slow pace of life here. It's the first time he's been filmed with a proper camera. On our way back to the garage, I ask him if he feels as if he's a star. <laughs> Да нет, я себя суперзвездой. А вообще я не знаю. Каким был, таким я остаюсь. Зачем вообще же мне вообще я вообще же мне. Back in the garage, Gaynor puts on another pair of trousers as greasy as the last pair. He shakes hands with the other mechanics and thanks them for taking over his share of the work. Постоянно, конечно, нужно в своей жизни определиться в одном месте вот с работы это здесь работаешь живешь и все не нужно никуда не бегать ни к тем работодателям ни к другим уважение друг к другу с начальством когда и с рабочим больше ничего не надо мы как семья у нас нету тут такого что вот босс приказываю тебе там нет такого просто семья работаем I leave Kyakta, but I'll never forget Gaynor and his garage. He's destined to be accompanied by oil and dirt the rest of his life, but he always looks clean and tidy to me. Gaynor, like the tall trees here, is an upstanding individual and the future of Russia. If Gaynor represents the Russian people's simplicity and strength, Sergei is a symbol of the Russian people's romance and artistry. Here they have dynamic rap rhythms, lyrical guitar songs, romantic young people, Poetic farmers, touching poems, and a beautiful life.